Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an example on how financial ratios are used. So in the prior session, I showed you, generally speaking, how do we use financial ratios to evaluate a company? The best way to look to, to learn how to do this is basically to look at an example. So we're going to look at this company. We're going to look at 12 ratios. We're not going to look at all of them. We're going to look at, you know, few of them that that required further investigation and we're going to make some conclusions. So we are given current ratio, quick ratio, times interest earned, inventory turnover, so on and so forth. And we're giving the data from 2012 till 2016. So we have five years worth of data. The more years you have, the better off you, you are. Okay. So the first thing is they want us to know is what major conclusions can be drawn from the from this information about the company's future. So let's assume you are giving you are looking at this information. What could you say about the company? So what could you say about the company? So let's take a look at what we can say about the company. Okay, let's start by looking at the quick ratio. Okay, so what is the quick ratio? It's going to help you determine if you have enough liquid asset to meet your short term obligation. This is the quick ratio. And here's what's happening to your quick ratio. In 2012, it was 1.64. So for every dollar in liability, so basically it's the, the ratio is the quick assets, divide them by current liabilities. Quick assets are cash, AR, and short-term investment. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the quick assets, divide them by current liabilities. And in 2012, you had dollar sixty-four in quick asset and every dollar in liabilities. Okay, so you were good. In 20, 2013, actually you had more quick asset, dollar seventy-six. So you had a lot of cash account receivable relative to current liabilities. Again, it's the quick assets divide them by CL, current liabilities. So far, so good. In 2014, you either, you either you improved further, which is good. Then there was a drop in 2014, and there was a major drop in 2016. Okay, so notice after 2014, the, uh, the quick ratio dropped substantially relative to 12, 13, and 14. Okay, and actually in 2016, this is really worrisome relative to the 2012 because think about it now you have more liabilities than your quick assets so you don't have enough quick asset to cover your current liabilities so the number in the numerator so so this is 97 divided by 100 so you have 100 current liabilities and 97 in quick assets this is what 0.97 means all what we can say is it's it, it's concerning. We need to, to take to take a look into this figure. What's going on? Okay, um, are we reporting more current liabilities than we should, or are we not reporting all our quick asset? What's happening? But there's something wrong. And this is if it's true, it could be true. It's worrisome. Why? Because now the company does not have enough current as uh, quick asset, which is cash receivable and investments to it should to meet its short term obligation. And obviously. What we could do, since we talked about receivable, we want to see what's happening to receivable. We could go down to ratio four and ratio five, which deals with account receivable turnover and days sales to collect receivable. Both of these receivable, both both of these ratios, what do they what do they look at? They look at my receivable. They look at how often I'm, I'm, I am turning over my receivable. How many times am I collecting my money? And days to collect receivable is how many days it's taken me to collect receivable. Now, what should we see here? We should see deterioration in this. Why? Because if the quick ratio is deteriorating, there's a good chance those are deteriorating. So from 2012, we were turning over our inventory 5.6 times. It means we were selling collecting money, selling, collecting money, selling, collecting money 5.6 times. If we take 365 divided by 5.6, on average, we were collecting our money every 65 days. So every 65 days, we were collecting our money. In 2013, the, the ratio deteriorated a little. 2014 deteriorated, it improved, then it deteriorated again to 4.2. So overall, if we look at a trend, the trend of the receivable is going now. And notice, it went from 65 to 67 days to 89 days 
down to 66 days, up to 86 days. So overall, it's taken us longer to collect our money. And that is a problem. That is a problem. Are we, are we having too many incollectibles? Are we, are we reviewing our account receivable? Is there any receivable that we need to write off? And it's a problem. If there is any receivable we need to write off, it means the quick ratio, it's going to deteriorate even more if that's the case. But this is a worrisome, worrisome trend for the company because their uh, days to collect receivable is going down. Okay. Well, also we could examine inventory turnover. Inventory turnover, it's not part of the quick asset, but we want to see what's going, what's happening to their inventory turnover. It went from 3.36, they were selling their inventory, buying and selling, buying and selling 3.36 times a year. Now they're only turning their inventory twice, which is basically every six months they have to replace their inventory. In terms of days, it used to take them on average, inventory used to set 108 days. Now on average, inventory is setting 180 days. Again, this company overall, the company is deteriorating. The company is deteriorating. Now, having said so, we have to keep in mind, we have to compare this company to other companies in the industry. Now, if other companies, also their situation is deteriorating, it means whatever this business in, it means the, the market is speaking or going down in, in that industry. So that's why everybody is having problems. But if we're having problems and competitors are not, and the industry overall is doing well, then this is very worrisome. Okay. So again, what can we say? We can say we need to take a look at inventory. Maybe they have uh, absolute inventory. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, what we need to do, we need to write down inventory, which is not good, but it's something that we have to look at. It's something that we have to look at. Maybe the inventory, too much inventory on hand, that's not, that's not selling. Okay. So we need to write it down, which in turn could affect our earnings, which in turn could affect our current ratio. But the point is those are the things we have to look at. Okay. Profit margin. The profit margin seems to be average. Nothing, you know, nothing unusual. But I think it, you know, again, it. I would, I would look at it because if it's taken us longer to sell the inventory, profit margin should also be affected. Okay, why? Because if it's taken us longer, we may have to lower down our prices. If we're lowering down our prices, our profit margin will go down, and that's not showing. Basically, we were the profit margin was fourteen. Um, 15, 16, down to 14, and down to 13. To, to, to a degree, it's within, you know, two points of, you know, 14%. But again, there's not much, I mean, we need additional information. Return on assets seems to be stable. Return on equity went from 11% to 5%. This is worrisome. Not worrisome, but we need to know why it was cut in half. Maybe the company issued more common equity. What, what happened is net income or earnings divided by common stock outstanding, just common stock. So what happened if this number goes up, if we're issuing more common stock, if we're issuing more common stock, then obviously the ratio will go down. So we need to know if the company did issue more common stock, especially starting in 2015, because this is where the ratio dropped. So that could be the case, but that's something very simple to verify. We just need to take a look to see if the, what happened on the balance sheet under common, common stock, if that number went up. Earnings per share, 414, 426, improving, deteriorating a little, then improving. Um, I would recalculate this. I would definitely recalculate this because it seems it's a stable while the company is not doing well. So that's something we want to look at. Something something we want to look at. Okay. Okay. Again, those are the things that I can see. Um, for example, times interest earned. Um, times interest earned means how, how many times they're, they're covering their interest from uh, from earnings. They were covering their interest from earnings 7.9 times. It went to 5.3, 4.1, 3.2, and 3.5. So their interest times interest earning is also deteriorating. Okay, uh, it could be their earning is down, or it could be their interest expense is up. But if they're issuing more equity, their interest expense should not be up. Okay, so if we're saying they're issuing more common stock they should be issuing less debt. Therefore, they should have less interest expense. But why is their interest times interest earned deteriorating too? Also, they could be earning less money. If they're earning less money, why is their earning per share is not 
is not going down. The earning per share is pretty stable. So those, those are the areas that I can see as potential problems. Again, I don't have the complete information. We're working with just the ratios, but this is how you use the ratios. You look for trends. You'll try to find explanation for the trends. Again, what do I need? I will need the industry average. So additional information I will need is industry averages. That's something I would like to look at in that industry. See what's going on. I would like to see their debt to equity. Okay, and from this, based on this, I'm expecting that their equity, they're, they're issuing more equity. They're issuing more equity. Why? Because their return on equity was cut in half. But also, if they're issuing more debt, it's going to be very worrisome because their, their coverage of interest expenses is deteriorating. But I want to look at this number. Okay, I want to look at how well they are doing with their debt repayment overall. Okay, why? Because they're having problem in their quick ratio. Or do, they, do they have enough cash? What else I would like to look at? I would like to look at aging of the receivable. Basically, show me how how old is your receivable. You know, zero to thirty days, thirty to sixty days, uh, sixty to ninety days, and receivable over ninety days past due. If they have too many here, we will need to write them off. Okay, I want I want to see an aging of receivable. I want to see the inventory. How often are they marking down their inventory? How are they marking down their inventory? I want to look at the inventory valuation. Are they properly using lower of cost or market? Are they writing down their inventory? Okay. Also, what would be useful is to look at their long-term debt versus short-term debt. Okay. Again, this is useful and that could help us explain other things. Okay. Once again, this is just looking at this company. And again, we notice that inventory, we need to look at inventory. We need to take a look at the receivable, which in turn would help us look at other things as well, because they're going to help us. Inventory and receivable will help explain the quick ratio. Also, inventory and receivable will help explain the profit margin, will help explain the profit margin, will help explain return on asset. So it's all interrelated, but the key is to know what are you looking for, to look, to pinpoint um, red flags in the company. Okay, what's wrong? What, what, what's what do you see as a trend? A red flag, really good or really bad? Okay, and try to explain this 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 observation within the context of the company, within the context of the industry, within the context of maybe a competitor. This is only learning about the company. Hopefully, this exercise helped you understand how to evaluate how to evaluate. Um, how to evaluate ratios when you are performing an audit, when you are performing an audit, okay? And this is basically it. This is a good exercise. The next topic I believe that we're, I'm going to be covering is uh, audit documentation, how to, uh, what's included in the audit doc, what is audit documentation and what's included in audit documentation. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, make sure to study hard.